Thank you, John Durrani, for those uh, uh, initial remarks. Um, uh, I'm glad that you have agreed to take on the Q&A session as well. And uh, we will now open the floor for, for question, answers, and uh, I, I recognize uh, uh, Mr. Surya Narayana, and I'm proud to be here. Uh, yes, will you introduce yourself for the record, of course? Sure. Uh, Surya Narayana from ISAS. So your diplomatic instincts I have led you to firm belief that India and Pakistan could come together to the rescue of Afghanistan, if I may put, put it that way. But as a former army general, Pakistan is known to think of Afghanistan as a territory that affords Pakistan what is known as strategic depth in relation to India. So how do you square up this Pakistani clamor for strategic depth with the agenda of peace which you have outlined so brilliantly. And secondly, what role, if any, would you assign to China in Afghanistan post-2014? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, very good question. Uh, strategic depth uh, is counted uh, everywhere in Pakistan. I think there were two, three crazy people in the Pakistan military who thought that Afghanistan could be strategic depth for Pakistan. I essentially disagree with that concept to start with. I don't think a neighboring country with which you have hardly working relations can become a strategic depth. So that's a fallacy to start with. Afghanistan cannot be strategic depth for Pakistan. Pakistan is unfortunate the way its geography in north, east, south, west and fairly linear, and particularly all this infrastructure along the border with India. So we don't have strategic depth, unfortunately. So we have to learn to live without strategic depth. And <coughs> on a piece of paper, to somebody, it may look like a nice uh, you know, strategic depth, but in essence, it is not. And uh, the second point on this I would like to make, that uh, when I was going to India in uh, September 2011, I met the leadership of the Pakistan Army. Uh, no, I wanted because I was going, you know, with my background, Indians know that. And so they were expecting me to, you know, talk about that too. So I had to talk to them. And uh, I'm glad to report here today that then the Army leadership said that, no, we want peace. The reasons I'm not going to, but they are on board uh, this particular issue. Is this stupid mistrust? How we get rid of that or how we reduce that and move on forward. Uh, second, your question was about China. I think uh, China is a very, very important uh, major player of the region and uh, they have interests in Afghanistan, they are looking at the general wealth of Afghanistan, even strategically, you know, they would like to counter the uh, U.S. Uh, move there, but as you know, they are very quiet, low-key weapons, and this is what they are doing, uh, they have a role, and uh, as I mentioned, that the friends of India and Pakistan, among whom China has won, because they are now friends with both countries, that they can nudge Pakistan and India. Uh, their nudging is very soft, as you know, when compared with the Americans. The Americans are a little uh, more strong in their nudging. And uh, no offense, man. Yes. Uh, so my name is Gautam Bahi. I'm from India. Uh, my question uh, is actually pertaining to the fact that uh, we all know that we get to read that the Kaze regime's uh, you know, um, sphere of control is very limited beyond Kabul. Uh, there is a likely scenario that in 2014, when they, the Americans pull out, uh, you know, the, the situation may regress to a, to a you know, pre-2001 state where Taliban may again begin to show its fangs. Now, we know that uh, the 9-11 incident was an inflection point and turned around, uh, you know, the support, if I may use that term, of the Pakistani regime to Taliban. Uh, at this stage, we're talking about a zero-sum game. Uh, what, what, in what way can India be sure of the fact that Pakistan will not again uh, begin to hunt with the hounds and run with the hare, 
uh, and support Taliban, if I may use that term, to foment uh, the kind of issues that have been ha happening inside India, uh, you know, pre-2001. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a good question and uh, asked many times uh, about this uh, running down and hunting the hair or it's the other way around. <laughs> but uh, you're right. Uh, this, this is the worry uh, a lot of people have. And even now I'm sure I get a question on this, that uh, Pakistan is still in back with Sakhul Taliban and so on. And uh, how can India be assured. I think there is no way that India can be assured that Pakistan will behave or Pakistan will be assured that India will behave. There is no switch for that side. Both countries have to sit down, talk openly, frankly, stop being diplomats, roll up their sleeves and talk openly with each other kind of a catharsis. We need to do that. And we need to reduce the mistrust. I, I don't think anybody can assure anybody else. So it's, it's just we decide that we are going to move forward and then assure each other with small steps on both sides. Because it is in our interest for the simple reason. Uh, but nobody is going to give guarantees and might as well forget about it. That will not happen. I hope I have answered. Uh, Dr. Shanti, this is Susan. Uh, General, you made a very uh, important point about actually bringing India and Pakistan together in working in Afghanistan, and you also proposed a number of initiatives like the trade and transit. But we know that we, uh, India and Pakistan have problems in terms of the trade and transit, the agreement in Afghanistan. And having said that, we also want to know that given the fact that diplomats and people to people interaction want better relations between the two countries and move away from the zero sum game, the intelligence agencies do play the game. Now, my question is who controls Pakistan's Afghan policy? Is it the intelligence agency or is it a bureaucracy and a civilian leadership in place? And if this question is to be extended, it also is important to understand what is Pakistan's relationship with Afghanistan? The major issue is the Duran line, which remains contentious. So how much ago you talk about the relationship with the Pashtuns across the border, the Duran line is a point of contention whereby Afghanistan is not ready to uh, cooperate with Pakistan. That leads to the point of the reconciliation which is occurring. You rightly pointed out that we don't know what's going to happen in 2014, but various talks about bringing back the Taliban in some form creates a lot of concern in the region, especially in India. Is there any way you can have a transparent mechanism whereby India, Afghanistan, and all the countries involved are brought to the table and discuss of who is getting back to Kabul in what form, who is going to control the power structures, and what's going to happen in Afghanistan after 2014? It's a fallacy to think that Americans are leaving. Americans are going to stay there in some form. And it's an external power which is going to be there, which is going to dictate the India-Pak relationship beyond 2014 itself. And if you look closely at the agreement and strategic partnership agreement between India and Afghanistan, the focus has been on regional cooperation and transparency. And the various, uh, various diplomats in India have talked of this bilateral dialogue. But the fact is that how far will Pakistan go in bringing about the transparent mechanism? That's the first question. And secondly, well, what would be... one question so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as an extension from your talk, how would you look at 2014 Afghanistan, which is in Pakistan's interest and in India's interest? You know, your question is almost, or in many ways, similar to the gentleman's question. How will Pakistan assure? And my answer is really the same. Don't expect Pakistan to assure, because the misgivings that you have about Pakistan, Pakistani scholars have almost identical misgivings about it. They don't even want Pakistan to exist. They never came to terms with Pakistan's well being there and so on. It's, believe me, it's, it's, it's literally a mirror image of what you are saying. So again, I would say that it will not happen. This is exactly, I'm proposing an antidote, which is that let India and Pakistan not even involved in Afghanistan. 
let India and Pakistan get together and say, guys, can we work together in Afghanistan? Will working together be beneficial for us? Or do, do we continue with the same game, etc.? You know, so they have to sit down and talk to each other. Otherwise, there is no system because the mistrust, unfortunately, is so deep and it has been growing, unfortunately, then reduce it. That's, uh, I'm taking your uh, comments <coughs> slash question in adverse order. Uh, now, you talked about who controls the policy towards the market. That's another good uh, question and a frequent question. Now, in Pakistan, we all know, the world knows that the military has had a dominant role, right? How many martial laws have we had? Three, four, three, three and a half, no, quite a few. So because of that, and I'm not happy with that, I'm not proud of that, I blame both the military and the political leadership for that. That's a different issue. But this is the reality that they have been there. Then the ISI, rather than saying intelligence agency, you might have said ISI. ISI had been very central in the policy towards in all sort of forms, which is probably also true. But we want to change that. And we hope that five years of democracy has changed that somewhat. The military has stayed back in the barracks. It has not come in. And with the passage of time, I think uh, this, this will change if we continue the positive track. There are no guarantees. Uh, but with time, even, even now, what I would say is that even the military realizes that peace with India is important for our survival. I'm telling you, I'm quoting at the highest levels of the Pakistan military. Things have changed. We have other bigger issues. If you look at Pakistan, we have pretty severe issues of our own. India has gone into the background with terrorism, its insurgency, its bread and butter, its power. So we have a lot of issues. So we don't want to continue with that zero sum game. So this is my almost as long answer. <laughs> yeah. But she had another point uh, that uh, uh, Americans are not going to go away. Yes. No, no. I, I even, I think I mentioned that the Americans, are, they're not going away. That's why I said the future will depend on how much they pull out and at what pace do they pull out. But they will have a better. Uh, with that, I will also add that Afghanistan has almost never been left alone on its own. Afghanistan has never been left to the Afghans. Starting from its early history, you know, you had the Arabs, the Aryans, the Iranians, the Central Asians and whoever coming in, either staying there or going through to the subcontinent. and. Even if you look at the recent history of Afghanistan before uh, the Soviet invasion, if you had gone to Afghanistan, this road is built by the Russians, this is built by the Americans, that is built by the Germans. So everybody has a finger in that part. So it will not be left on its own, I am quite sure of that. And Americans are not going to go away because they have other broader objectives in the region too. And the discussion on the reconciliation with? The talks with the Taliban, which is happening, and how Pakistan is positioned itself with the talks? Uh, I think uh, I have a very different view from maybe my leadership also and uh, from uh, rest of the people. That um, at least my reading of history and uh, my uh, reading of the Taliban has been that. Whenever you talk from a position of weakness, you know that much. I may remind you that because in 2004 or 2005, I don't quite remember, that uh, the Pakistan government had a peace agreement with Naik, Naik, Naik Muhammad. Naik Muhammad. And he renegated on it even before. Uh, 
uh, uh, input price. Similarly, when the ANP government, the Awami National Party government was elected in the frontier, and they had a similar agreement with uh, we call it popularly at Mona Radio or Fazlullah in uh, Subhat. He also renegated before the input price. So one has to be careful. I am I am not so optimistic of these peace talks. And why should the Taliban go for peace talk unless they are going to get a big chunk of the game? Mr. Girija Pandey. General, given the last episode of so many decades, we should take time to get any money. Is the end game going to be a division of Afghanistan? And then how does it square up with the real mind and the challenges that Pakistan will start facing on the other side? Sir, you are stealing lines from my tomorrow's talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, that is a possibility. That is a possibility. Because what has happened is in Afghanistan, and it started with the Soviet invasion, that the society became very fractured in Afghanistan. You know, the very delicate balance between the various regions and the tribes, that was totally knocked off, disturbed, and the fissures became very deep and strong. And you cannot put Humpty Dumpty together again, I think. So the possibility of fracturing of Afghanistan is very much alive. For Pakistan, uh, yes, that is an issue. Uh, but I tell my uh, contemporaries in Pakistan that we should not overtly worry about this. We should be a little more forthcoming. And we say, yeah. Let's talk about it. Let's have a referendum. Let's ask the uh, Pashtuns on the uh, Afghan side, where do they want to go? Or the Pashtuns on the Pakistan side, where do they want to go? You look at the movement of trade, settlement, other issues. I think the Pashtuns on the Afghan side will be very happy to come to this side. And then, of course, uh, you know, further on there could be other issues and so on. But I, that doesn't worry me, although it is an issue of the UN line. I wish it was settled. And quite honestly, during these last couple of years, you know, everybody, Americans, Afghans, British, French, <coughs> England, they all say, please look after this, uh, inter uh, this border. And Pakistan says, damn it, you don't even recognize it. So why are you asking us to look after it? Why don't you look after it? Why not just get rid of it? So you know, they are playing double games. So that, that is the problem. Professor Modi. General, I enjoyed uh, your presentation. I have two difficulties. Uh, one is with the title, and the second is with your prescription. Uh, you started, and, and as the title says, there is a zero sum game, but you started saying that Indians explained to you that there is no zero sum game. They are not in the game. <coughs> in Afghanistan? Yes. That's what the subject is. Yes. And I don't take Indians on face value. I'm an Indian, but you can, you can do that. Look at the reality. Uh, India is active in the areas in Afghanistan where Pakistan is nothing to do. And India is nowhere visible where Pakistan is dominating the sea. In, now, there is zero sum game. I don't quite understand it. This is a typical Pakistani proposition that we are there to see Indians don't come in. And they have been feeding this with the West for a long time. I mean, you would know it much better than anybody else. Therefore, I, I'm, I, we can go into details, but I have some difficulty with equating India and Pakistan, as if both of them are trying to have their uh, slice of cake uh, in, in, in one way or the other. On the prescription, you say that <coughs> India and Pakistan should come together. Uh, you, you started your presentation by saying that Pakistan has to deal with India. Therefore, it wants a friendly government in Afghanistan. 
the priority remains with it. Now, with that being so, if the if the talks between the two could do anything, uh, you think 60 years, past 60 years has not been a small period. There is, you are absolutely right when you talk about the trust deficit or <coughs> from where does this trust deficit arise? Uh, who is not willing to talk and negotiate on trade, on on travel, on pipelines, on uh, socio-economic issues, where the problem is, where the obstacles are, why not we identify them and then we start addressing them. Thank you very much for uh, very interesting uh, comments. Uh, what I started my talk, and I said, this is what the military does. But the military is still there. No, no. We can't let, wish let, it away. Let, let me talk. Yes. This is what I said to the military. And also somewhere in between, I said, that is a change of heart. This is, you may not agree with it, uh, Professor Mohan. But no, no, in India, I see that this. I know, I know. But I, I went to India in uh, September 2011, spoke with your national security advisor. I spoke uh, with a lot of people in government, influentials out of government. And I told them that there is a change of heart and this is what Pakistan wants. What is happening is today, from let's take it from a military perspective, you look at the deployment of the Indian forces. You look at the uh, the way they are armed, what kind of equipment they have. You know, militaries, when they plan for the future and a threat assessment, they base it on the capability of the enemy. Now, Professor Saab, if you analyze the capability, then you, I don't have to answer anymore. So this is, this was there. We want to change this. I am one of those ex-military people who want to change this. I mentioned to you what is the present situation. I am for a change. We have to change this. If we don't change this, we will continue. Okay. Now your second part on your prescription and who's doing what. Now I mentioned to you that rightly or wrongly, a broad section of Pakistanis are convinced and the government, I've been in government too, that the Indian, I mentioned the six or seven consulates which are facing in Pakistan not in the north. They are down here. Facing Pakistan, there is no Indian there. So Pakistan is worried that yaar, ye kya kar rahe hai, what business do they have. Second, we have written proof of collaboration between the Indian intelligence and the Afghan intelligence. Written. Trust me. So it's not an airy fairy thing that Pakistan is just making empty noises. There is some truth in that, sir. So uh, you are listening to one side of the story. If we get together and talk to each other, maybe we will understand each other. And that is my fundamental point. That we need to, the two governments need to sit down and talk to each other. And more than that, I think if we open the visas and treat each other like we treat the rest of the world, we'll be much better off. Who's stopping that? India, Pakistan, you better look at it. So this is, is India. Oh, I see. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is not the only thing. Well, we will never proceed further. No, no. But I mean, just because I disagree with you doesn't mean you'll not. You know, I have this position that, you know, as you said, there but, are mirror images on both the sides. But, sir, we have to change this. We have to change this, the world changes. You look at where the Germans and French were. People change, and people should change. And I think our people deserve this. Pray. Why hasn't CHN been resolved? Why hasn't Sir Kirik been resolved? So, you know. So a lot of, the point is that, that we need to change that paradigm. There's no other way. We don't have time to go into all I the issues. Well, we have tea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tea is not for these well, we I can come back and talk to you if you want. No problem. Okay, sorry.
Yes, I'm Arne Perra from the German press. I don't want to talk about France, but about the US. <laughs> uh, it was mentioned before. And I would like to ask in what way would the US either obstruct or facilitate that kind of vision you have of uh, a more cooperative policy between Pakistan and India and Afghanistan? Are the US an obstacle to that, or are they actually no, they are not an obstacle, uh, but I believe that if the Pakistanis and Indians talk to each other openly, uh, we'll have greater benefits. Uh, the Indians, for one, are very allergic to a third party intervention. Pakistan isn't for that. Even on issues like Kashmir, we would run. We wanted Americans, we wanted so and so to uh, you know, uh, uh, sit down between the two. India did not. So, that's why I say we don't have them. The, what the Americans can do and what the Chinese can do and what maybe no country can do is just help these two countries to move on this uh, direction. Maybe put a little pressure, soft pressure, that why don't you talk? Why, what advantage do you see in fighting in Afghanistan? But we can try to serve the tree when the talks are happening. Hmm? <laughs> Sorry, a little louder. No, no. Is it? No, no, because just, sorry, just remember, I say we can, because you said we should facilitate like the Germans and the Germans were. Yes. We could at least serve the tea, which made the talks possible. <laughs> 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 you are, you are. Peter German television. German television, yes. In fact, let me comment, one little comment. Uh, this is during the uh, rule of the Taliban in Afghanistan. Your government played a very significant role in trying to bring some kind of a peace in Afghanistan this is during the Taliban. They collected, the, it was a combined initiative by the UN and by the German government. The German government footed the bill, the UN initiated these talks. They were uh, have beans like me from Pakistan, Russia, uh, US, Iran on a table in Berlin uh, trying to see how we could dissolve Afghanistan and get rid of the Taliban. Unfortunately, we were overtaken by 9-11. Actually, uh, Germany, uh, oddly enough for historical reasons, uh, has been uh, very involved in Afghanistan. I mean, the first Western school in Afghanistan was a German school. And even in uh, the present cabinet, when Rangin Spanta was uh, foreign minister, he was German speaking. And he used to say that he's the only one who would turn up for cabinet meeting on time. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Yes. Me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, my name is uh, Nawaz Khan. I'm an airline pilot, so I have nothing to do with the academic world, but uh, this topic brought me here. Very interesting topic. So, whenever you have a proposal, your proposal fits in or works in an environment, not in a vacuum. So, environment is the future as you see. So you very correctly pointed out uh, ineffective or uh, very weak Karzai government, lot of corruption, military not really building its capacity, and all uh, these four or five points which you brought out. So it's a very weak structure. What is holding it there? The US presence. That is holding it there. The day that presence uh, goes down, uh, or goes down towards zero eventually, not 2014, another five years, seven years, eight years, then this structure is not going to be there. So what is the natural state? You came up with rise of tribalism, or the tribal warlords, they are going to come back. That is the natural state. It will be there sooner or later. Maximum six years, seven years, eight years. We, call, we used to call, call them uh, Mujahideen, nowadays we call them uh, Taliban, and in future we're going to call them just Afghans, what they are actually. And Pashtuns are the major stakeholders in Afghanistan. Nothing is going to be natural and long-lasting till the time they have a greater and larger stake in the power. That is Kabul. So till the time that situation happens, I don't think the solution of trade bringing in stability, it fits into the very, very murky situation. I, I cannot really correlate the two. Help me bring in this solution to the problems at hand. 
uh, I'm in total uh, disconnect, the two things. And Lenin used to say, what is to be done? <laughs> so what is to be done? Okay, let me tell you. In my opinion, the biggest rivals in the region are India and Pakistan. That is a fact. We are so unsure of each other, each other's every move, we are very unsure. And whatever the issues are between us, Afghanistan is nowhere there in those issues. It is only very recent one, and it is only, uh, well, uh, off the main scope kind of uh, radar echo, you can say, or something like that, the Afghanistan thing. So I think for uh, Pakistan and India to cooperate, we should better address the actual issues which have been cause of conflicts. That is where the focus should be. Expecting Pakistan to give even a centimeter in Afghanistan is, uh, there are no takers in Pakistan for this proposal. I personally believe there are no takers for this proposal. In Afghanistan, giving a centimeter, let's not talk of inches, a fraction of a centimeter to India in Afghanistan. I mean, uh, so, so that is... That you ask the question and provide the answer. <laughs> Actually, thank you very much. I will make no comments on it. I have your point of view, and there is some truth in that that things uh, are not going to settle soon. Yes. You are again going into my tomorrow's talk. I am yeah. also saying that, that for the next three, four years, there will be total instability. Yes. Beyond that, my crystal ball becomes hazy. What happens after that? But so how right. is this solution? But uh, to I will only make one comment on what you said, that Pakistan is not ready to give an inch to India on Afghanistan. I, I think uh, we don't, uh, we are not in that position. Pakistan is not in that position. Uh, I think India has a very strong presence in Afghanistan. They have a very good relation with Afghanistan, and we should have no illusion about that. To the Afghanistan present government, you can say. Not no, Afghanistan. I'm talking with the people. Okay, I, I had an impression that some people were raring to go. Uh, yes, I, I yes, and, uh, Yes, Samar. Yeah, you, you, you introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Saram. I'm a student at the LKY school. Uh, General Saab, there's a saying in Pakistan, once a general, always a general. And uh, your views have sort of dis reflected that of India today. And uh, you proclaim to be a, a person who's served in the military and then come and serve and a big proponent of peace. You only talk about bilateral dialogue between the two countries. That's obviously not happening. Do you think the Pakistan establishment is on board with peace for, with India? Once the, a general, always a general? <laughs> the short answer by the general is, yes, sir. <laughs> and the long answer? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I see this. I mean, these are uh, views that have been drilled and so on, and the military is not on board, but the military also realizes. You know, what's the condition of the country? I, I hinted at that. What's the condition of our economy? Can the Pakistani economy afford the kind of military that you need? In no. So, so there are many issues. So they are on board today. Trust me. Uh, yes. So, it's not trade or benefits which we see or collaboration which probably will bring the two countries together on this issue. The biggest worry to India <coughs> is a disintegration of Pakistan. Most Indians do not want to see that happen. We want a stable neighbor. So if Afghanistan becomes unstable, there is a very good chance of Pakistan becoming unstable. That would be the only reason Indians will come on the table to do this dialogue. Trade and gains, it's too small for India to worry about the trade and some of the tappy and things. They're beneficial, but they're not in the scheme of things, not big numbers. I, I uh, won't disagree with you, sir. I mean, uh, I did uh, mention that. That if there is instability and chaos, it will automatically flow into Afghanistan. I mentioned that we have joined at the hips. And I even mentioned that it is like gravity. It will be that fast. I wanted to mention that. That instability in Afghanistan will, in fact, if the Taliban come into being in uh, uh, 
uh, Afghanistan as the major stakeholders of power. We've had it as Pakistan because we have very serious issues with our own Taliban and if they have the support of the Afghan Taliban, we just had it. We've been so many issues. What you're saying is a possibility and we want to work against that. Maybe that will interest the Indians fine. But this, this is a very live and a real issue. I have noticed it. But this issue has to be pushed in India. Or oh, India to come to the Okay. Well, we still have a few minutes left. Uh, uh, yes. If I may uh, set the cat and the pigeons. Uh, what about the K word? I mean, uh, obviously the, that's the that's the genesis of the, of the trouble, if you may, between India and Pakistan. And, and as this gentleman just said, uh, unless you resolve those issues, you can't move. There can be no traction uh, in, in other aspects as well. So what's what's the view? And I'm just pushing the develop. I don't know if you'll be in a position to answer this question, but but, but I think that's you know a K word is Khyber. <laughs> 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 that is the pigeon. <laughs> no, uh, this uh, K word, uh, let me tell you one thing. I started my schooling in that K place in uh, Sirinagar. When my first school was in Sirinagar, that's where I started my education. Uh, you know, there are two views on this. Story. One is, and uh, both in Pakistan, and, uh, but it is stronger in Pakistan, unless you resolve these major issues, to mm -hmm. the The other view is, ke, yaar, relax. Chote chote issue pale solve karo to phir bade me jai. That is the other view. I happen to support the second view. Low hanging fruits first for those who didn't. Wo bhi khatam ho gaya waise. That is also finished. Uh, yes. Uh, Just a bit of clarification on uh, the kind of political exploitation in Kabul in 2014. Uh, with this prospect of getting Taliban back into the political system. Is it useful for Pakistan for having Taliban back and reintegrated and being reconciled inside the political system or they stay out? Because you know, we noticed the kind of differences which have emerged between the Federation and the other uh, factions of the insurgency, especially uh, Hakani network. So what is the situation? As you mentioned, that if Taliban is a major stakeholder, there would be a blowback in Pakistan. So what are you looking at doing with this Taliban which is based in the region? Pakistan. Well, uh, Pakistan is uh, today in a different position. It is fighting Taliban uh, at home in many places in its cities as well as the tribal areas. More than half are, uh, more than half, I think about over 140,000 uh, Pakistani troops are in Fatah and Suhar and the rest of Khaibar, Bakhtur Khan, Karachi, Lahore. We have a blowback. Of the Taliban. So we have a serious problem, internal serious problem. And the Taliban unfortunately have grown. So this is a serious problem. And we would not like, <coughs> majority of us, there are sympathizers in Pakistan of the Taliban. And that may agree with you. But the overwhelming majority of the Pakistanis do not want a Talibanized kind of dispensation. So we would rather, if we could wish the Taliban away out of our life, which we can't. So we have to get our house in order. We have to clear the Taliban out of the Pakistani, you know, uh, fabric almost today. And that is not an easy task. And with political instability and institutional rivalries, that has been a very difficult task. But we have to solve. And we don't want Taliban to rule Afghanistan, so what we already discussed. Okay, uh, yes. Sir, I'm Tejas. I study law here at the law school. Sir, you mentioned a point earlier that visa should be liberalized between India and Pakistan. There should be free movement. Uh, on that point, and one reason why I think India and Pakistan do not get along very good on bilateral talks is the happening of terrorist activities in India which are alleged to be by Pakistanis and some of them are proved to be Pakistani. So your views are, are, are known to the world on Ajman Kasab and India has seen 1993 and so on and so forth. So do you, do you recognize this as a problem between India and Pakistan? And if this is a problem, can there be a solution, can there be something which, which 
which does not bring this issue in the bilateral talks or, or is this always going to be ha to be there on the table? You know, you cannot wish this issue away. The mistrust and let's say what has happened in uh, India and uh, so called Pakistani and this has happened, this can definitely happen again. Because we have some jihadi groups, we have the Taliban. So no government in Pakistan can give a hundred percent guarantee, irrespective of what So we have to live with this and we have to move forward in spite of this. And my view is, again, this is my view, that most terrorists do not use visas and PIA flights to go across or trains to go across. They have other means. I think where we are lacking is that the Pakistanis don't know the Indians and the Indians don't know Pakistan. Of course, chaps like me will come and say, oh, oh no, we know a lot. I'm talking of the common man. And the common man, I think, when they travel on both sides, there's a lot of travel, they'll be able to see the amount of goodwill for each other. They will be able to see that the other side is just not a monster. They are human beings. You know, when I started this track to business, initially I wrote a little book and I said, when I started my life, I thought the only good Indian is the dead Indian. <laughs> Following the uh, red Indian. General, General Kassan. But now I have some of my best friends in India. I have some very close friends there. So if you interact with people, you meet people. First time I went to Delhi, I was fearful and worried. Now I crossed Vaga uh, Atari uh, uh, or land up in the uh, Delhi airport, there's a smile on my face. Because I'm looking forward to seeing some friends. Point is, if you have open visa, if you have more travel, I think it will be beneficial to both. Good. Uh, well, uh, yeah, good one. So my name is Abdul Asif and I am a student of the Point School of Public Policy. I am from Pakistan. Uh, you have been articulating and rather we are uh, looking at the position in Pakistan that Taliban insurgency is rising. Talibans are getting stronger day by day. So as a student of public policy, I understand that insurgencies do not survive without funding. So do you think who is funding this Taliban insurgency? I think uh, a lot of funding is in turn. In fact, uh, now they have become desperate, and if you sort of follow Pakistan news, particularly Peshawar, Karachi, there are a lot of kidnapping, kidnappings for money. So that is not the only source, that is not the biggest source, but that is the source. Then, unfortunately, they also get some funding from abroad. And, uh, and that abroad, uh, don't look at India, it's more from the Middle East, more from North America, Chahab. So, uh, funding is both internal as well as external. Well, yes, the last question from back there. Um, hi, sir. Uh, my name is Pravin and I'm an intern at uh, ISAS. Um, I, I don't really have the like, content knowledge to really rebut what you're saying or, or to agree with it, but I think that I think everyone needs to take home something when they come for a talk. And um, I think what a lot of people sometimes don't really understand, like, we don't really pay much attention to is the fact that um, the, the importance of hope is, is, is very important because like, I, I hear everyone speaking and there's a whole bunch of problems, there's a multitude of problems, there's so many problems from so many different perspectives but I think it's important that uh, we need to believe that there is a solution and that there will be a solution at some point of time and um, I as, in, as, in as someone who's pretty much younger than most people in the room uh, I think uh, <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would like to believe that, that there is a solution and I think if I mean it may take place through various machinations various perspectives uh, but I think what I will take away like I mean growing up on a healthy diet of Tamil and Hindi movies I do believe that used to believe that uh, the best Pakistani is probably a dead Pakistani but um, <laughs> but I don't anymore because I've grown up and I've grown up uh, to a certain extent, I think. Uh, but I, I, I mean, I, what I'm trying to say is that I think it's important that people believe that there is a solution. And and I believe to a greater extent that there might be a solution today after coming for your talk. So I think that's important. Thank you. Thank you. That encourages you. Yeah. But alas, uh, it's just because there is a problem. 
It does not mean there is also a solution. Uh, however, we will bring our discussions to uh, to uh, conclusion. Uh, I will expand a little from what uh, Samar Bukhari has said. Uh, uh, when a soldier leaves his unit, he leaves behind two things, his debt and his friends. I don't know about General you know, Durrani's debts, but uh, he has not lost uh, left behind his friends because he entered the stream of Track two, in which uh, to which he has made some very important uh, contributions. Uh, takeaways, as Prabhu said, three things uh, we've got from from this talk broadly. I think one is that the concept of strategic depth doesn't exist anymore. I mean, it's no longer a reality. Pakistan will have to learn to live with its geography, uh, as uh, as. Uh, the Qaeda famously said, better a moth in Pakistan than no Pakistan at all. Better a long and slim Pakistan, perhaps, than a Pakistan with a strategic depth in another country. And secondly, that India is no longer viewed as a principal contradiction in Pakistan. Uh, uh, and he says this being, and he has repeated this, being a general, a general in the army who once believed that the, uh, uh, the only good engine is a dead engine. But he is bringing a message of, uh, uh, of uh, a wish for change. And this change can only be effected if both parties or all involved parties get together and talk. And that has been the thesis and sum total of his, the thrust of his arguments today. I will give him a little token of appreciation for his contribution. I also invite all of you to a uh, tea reception. Uh, I would, uh, 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 there are two elevators, but uh, since if, if you want to whip up an appetite, uh, you might want to walk uh, the stairs, just one floor. One, 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 one flight up. One flight up and, uh, uh, and to tea at ISAX. Okay? See you up there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.